Well, this is the second episode in a four-part series all about social media, technology, and our relationship to it. And today, I'm gonna to be teaching you the three things you can do to help make social media fit your life. Some are easy, and one of them is actually not so easy, but they certainly pack a punch. So let's get started. Welcome to the Strength, Yoga, and Freedom podcast, my friends. If you're new here, my name is Justin. This is the podcast where we use the philosophy of yoga in a practical and everyday way, one small step at a time to become happier people. Now, don't forget, you can connect with me on Instagram at Justin Ricky Yoga. And that's at J-U-S-T-I-N-R-I-C-C-I-Y-O-G-A. On Instagram, I post a lot of great stuff up there with regards to motivation, links for those things, following me and the emails and donating to the podcast or buying me a coffee, all that great stuff is all linked in the video description or in the show notes. So I'm so excited that you are here today because we're talking about social media. And in the previous installment of this podcast, we discussed how our relationship with social media draws us back to the practice of satya, which is translated to truthfulness. And that is that there is a need as human beings to belong to something, specifically with regards to communities and groups. Yet, as humans, we also find the need to want to grow. So there's this counter that's happening in us. We have a need to feel like we belong, but we have a feel like we need to grow. And a lot of us shut the growth part out and we just keep going with feeling like we belong. And you wanna know why? Because that's easy and growing is not easy. We also learned that the ego takes over and so we have to start practicing satya because satya is all about truthfulness. And when your values and your goals and the life you're living starts to change and the group that you are in is no longer aligning with your values and the things that you now want for yourself, well, it's time to start to stand in your truth and get the courage so that you can actually grow. And that might take some changes in the groups that you're in. That, my friends, is Satcha. That's the philosophy of yoga off the mat. So we talked all about that in the last episode, and we also talked about the ability to be connected to people being a huge deal for our emotional well-being. Because studies and research show us that having social connections eases anxiety, it gives us joy, and it even can reduce stress. However, social media can be the opposite depending on how you use it. So we talked all about that in the last episode. I encourage you to listen to the last episode before you go on to this one because it will give you a really good understanding of what are some things that you can do with regards to your mindset and social media. I taught you three things you can do with regarding your mindset and social media on the last episode. So start there. And then we're going to get right into today's topic, which is all about the three things that we can do to help social media fit into our lives. I am going to throw out some statistics for you. Some 4.48 billion people in the world use social media. And there are about 7.69 billion people in the world. Now, this statistic that I'm referencing, it, it only looked at people who are age 13 and up. So that's almost 60% of the age 13 and over population in the world that uses it, 60%. Now, I'm gonna link that in the notes for the video or the show notes, wherever you're listening to this, so that you can look at that entire article that was done by a company called Search Logistics, which I thought was so interesting while I was doing the research for this episode. Now, with that being said, though, I also, as I said in the last episode, don't think social media is a bad thing at all. I think it's actually a wonderful way to show your creativity. And I'm gonna give you some examples of that. Showing your beautiful art, maybe the songs that you're writing, some things that you're baking or cooking. What about fixing things or doing how-to videos for home improvement or things that you can do with your pets or for your kids or when you go traveling or car stuff? Uh, what about teaching physical wellness, helping people live on a budget, uh, other services that you could provide? 
what about growing with a group of people who share the same interests, like a sport or a traveling again will bring up books, education, that kind of stuff. Trying to inspire people, passing on words of encouragement, uh, creating comedy and funny things that we see influencers often do on social media that make us laugh. Much like you're watching a sketch comedy show on TV like Saturday Night Live. What about using social media to pull together to help someone by a creative mean that didn't exist before, like GoFundMe? I mean, we're blessed that we have that. So these are some wonderful ways that you can use social media now that can showcase some creativity. What I don't think is a good use of social media is posting pictures of yourself living a lifestyle that is misleading or false based on the lifestyle you're actually living. Cyberbullying fighting over certain points of view on there, endless updates about your daily life, which doesn't serve any intention other than to get attention, expressing your feelings instead of having conversations with people in person, being a cyber stalker and constantly trying to keep up with what people are doing to indulge yourself or taking the damn platform personally. Like, oh, when you post that, that means you're talking to me. That's you taking social media personally. So what are the three things you can do to help social media fit your life? Well, let's talk about those now. And let's get the hard one out of the way first. And this one requires you to tap into Sacha again, your truthfulness, which is fluid, by the way, because it's just not, it's not a, just a truth of how you feel now, but it's going to be fluid. Okay, so it's going to be a forever truth. And that may change as you grow, because as I mentioned, your values and what you like to tolerate in your life and all that great stuff changes as you go. Then your truth will change a little bit. So let's talk about that very first one, which is triggers. That's right. What is triggering you on social media? You need to ask yourself that question. A Turkish university study found that 210 million people worldwide suffer from a social media addiction. Now, I actually believe that it is not actually an addiction to social media itself. I believe that social media is a bridge to being addicted to feeling as though you belong to something and that belonging is at your fingertips. So it actually makes it easier than ever to get hooked. I mean, you literally just pick up your phone or other device and boom, you feel like you belong to something. It's not like you have to head out to the dance hall or to the gym and meet people to belong, right? You can put all that off and you can just pick up your phone and boom, there you are. So I really believe that social media addiction is an actual addiction to belonging. If you get lonely, do you turn on social media? Is that where you turn? If you don't want to go to the basement to clean it up, do you turn on social media? What about your relationships? When you have a fight, do you get on social media? When you get bored or maybe before you go to bed or when you get up first thing in the morning, is this a habit because you're trying to fill a void of the of the of of your own life and the things you have to handle in your own life? Is that why you're turning to social media? What about when you're at work? How many of you work with people who are constantly on their phones? on social media, looking at their Snapchat stories, looking at Instagram, looking at Twitter, looking at Facebook. How many people do you know that do that all day long? I do. And I often think, oh my God, what in the world are you looking at? All day long, is it really that important to where you're not focusing on what's going on in front of you at work that you have to be on your phone looking at social media? And listen, the old Justin was that person. I was the person who couldn't go an hour without looking at social media even at work. And it is a detrimental thing to you when you are looking at social media at work. Because not only are you not paying attention to the function of your your responsibility, the function that you play, the role you play in the organization that you're working in, but you're not paying attention to yourself and how you are actually thinking, operating, and moving with intention. So in order to get your social media fitting in your life, you must go deeper and figure out why you keep turning to social media in those specific instances. You can perhaps add this to your morning journaling exercises so you can figure it out deep down, maybe talk about it with your trusted medical professional. But this is the harder part, my friends. The harder part is when your hand reaches for that screen, stop and ask yourself, if you're doing this just on an everyday level, 
Stop and ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why am I grabbing the phone for social media? Why am I going on there? What is triggering me? Listen, only you can answer that question. But if you're gonna get serious about this, you are going to figure out what is triggering you in your social media intake. That's number one. Let's talk about number two. Now the next two are not as difficult as the triggering thing because the triggering thing really requires you to figure out what in the world is causing you to grab that phone or grab that tablet or get on or click the Facebook tab on your computer when you're at work. Number two though is unfollowing people. Now I, I love to unfollow people and I love to unfollow businesses and I love to unfollow groups. And here's why, because if you really want to clean up what you see on social media, you need to do this. Your social media is about you, not about everybody else, you. Just like what is triggering you to get on social media, what is triggering you about what you see on social media? Now, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about this one because this one is pretty obvious, but I just have two key takeaways that I want you to think about with regards to unfollowing people. Here's the first one. If, when you are scrolling, you see people, places, or groups that trigger you, then fucking unfollow them. Now, I am not here to tell you to unfriend someone. That's your choice if things get to that level in your relationship and you have to do that, then fine. I'm not here to tell you you have to do that. But when you unfollow people, boy oh boy do things change. And if you do not like what someone is posting or it triggers you, rather than engaging with it and starting this stupid fight that you start on social media or that you have seen people start on social media. I've started them, have you seen those fights that go back and forth and now all of a sudden your day is taken up with fighting with someone over what? On social media. You are wasting your time, unfollow them. And the second big takeaway is this. Remember that growth I mentioned earlier with regards to belonging and Sacha? Standing in your truth, remember that? When you rid your social media feed of things that no longer serve you, then they're not in front of you anymore. You see, you wanna put the shit in front of you that makes you happy. It's that simple. It's just that simple. Keep the things that don't make you happy away from you and keep the things that make you happy in front of them. I'm not suggesting that you don't do anything with the things that are making you unhappy. You need to figure that out as well. But at its basic level, on social media, my God, just get rid of it. It's That's your ego talking. Because if you have spoiled food in the refrigerator, you're going to get rid of it so you don't see it anymore. Why are you doing that on social media? Why are you keeping your spoiled food in your feed, in front of you? All right, now let's go on to number three. You must never begin your day on social media. Never. Never, ever, ever. Ever. (laughs) Ever. Even if your social media feed is clear and you have happy stuff on there, you still want to start your day with just one person. And no, it's not your partner, it's you. Yes, your partner can be with you via the phone or in person the other 23 hours of the day or 23 and a half hours of the day or 23 hours and 50 minutes of the day. Can you just take 10 minutes in the morning for yourself and not look at your social media until you've thought about what you feel like? You see, I've learned from several teachers, done so much studying and created a morning routine that fits my life in the best way I know it can fit. And the one thing I don't do is look at my phone for almost the first hour after I've gotten up. Now, if you've been following me for a long time, you know that I am big on morning routines and I've done episodes on morning routines. And does it suck to ignore the person other than maybe like a hello or a kiss that's laying in bed next to me after I get up so I could show up as the best version of myself, not only for me, but for them? Yes, it sucks. Yes, I wanna sit there and maybe talk or go into all the things that are planned for the day or whatever, but listen, I have to be able to be me before I can be me for anyone else. And that's the key to a successful morning. And does it suck that you're away from home or you're staying in a hotel with someone and you have to deliberately, I have to do this, I have to deliberately go out and find somewhere else to be where I don't have to be in around a whole bunch of other people. So I can be by myself. 
so I don't have to indulge how everyone else is doing before I figure out how I'm doing. That sucks. But let me tell you something. Looking at social media is just like doing what I just described to you in person, engaging with all these people in your life right before you even figure it yourself out. And when you first get up in the morning, you don't invite everybody into your bedroom, your bathroom, your living room, onto your porch or into your kitchen while you sit there and try to wake up. You generally don't invite the whole world to your house, do you? No. It's also like playing a game with yourself, right? To get out of bed and then rolling right into work. Why would you do that? Why? Because you have a habit of beginning your day with ego instead of intention. And folks, social media is not the way to begin, no matter how much you have cleansed your social media. You must begin the day, even if it's 10 minutes, figuring out how you feel and what are your priorities for the day. That's how you're gonna show up for other people. That's how you're gonna show up for your kids and your partner and your families and your job and your boss and your siblings. That's how you're gonna show up for them. Otherwise, can you trust yourself? I can't. And you can't really either. Let's just be honest. You can't trust yourself. You're going to want to comment. If you get on social media in the morning, you're going to want to comment on something. You're going to want to hit the like button. You're going to feel things. You're going to see things. You're going to start to trigger certain things. And then you know what's going to happen? You're going to start looking at your emails and then your texts and then your work and on and on and on. And it just keeps going. Here we go. Get off the social media in the morning until you have completed your morning routine. So let me recap those three things for you one more time. Figure out what your triggers are, unfollow people, and never begin your day with social media. Never. So I want you to take those three things and really think about them as you start into your end of your week and going into your weekend. And we return next week with episodes we're going to talk about, one, the effect of technology and social media in the evening, because we haven't talked about that, and, and it has a big impact on sleeping, so I want to talk about that. And number two, we're also going to talk about how you can use social media to inspire others. This is a really eye-opening one that I think you're going to really enjoy, and it, if you have the foundations of all the things we've been talking about, your social media will then turn into inspiration, and by inspiration, I'm not talking about laying out all of your feelings of frustration, anger, procrastination, complaining on social media about you. I'm talking about inspiring others through the things that you do. And we're going to talk all about that next week. So until then, I hope you guys find some wonderful happiness in your life because you deserve it every single day. See you next week.